Welcome to factoring. Now, factoring, what is factoring? Uh, how, how many of you have actually felt like this? If you can't really see, I'm not the best artist in the world, but you know, this is a student with their head down and they're just in their mind saying, help! That's kind of like what factoring is, right? It just gets to the point to where we don't even understand what it means. Well, this lesson, we're going to go ahead and introduce what factoring is in just all different types of ways. The first way of factoring is just factoring through what we call the greatest common factor. When we do that, then we're going to have lessons on factoring trinomials, factoring binomials, difference of squares, difference of cubes. We'll go through all the factoring models so you guys know how to factor completely. Factoring is one of the most important parts in algebra, and if you don't know how to do it, this will be a good lesson for you to watch. So here we have 12x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x, and it's asking us to what? Factor. What does that mean? Well, the first thing you want to do is see if you have a greatest common factor with the numbers. What does greatest common factor mean? Well, greatest common factor means that we take a number, what's the biggest number that can go into all three of these numbers? So we have, let's see, 12, 9, and 3. So what number, what big number goes into all three of these? Well, I know 3 goes into 3, right? 3 goes into 9, and 3 goes into 12. Great. Since 3 is the number already, there's no other big number that goes into 3 because 3 is the biggest number that goes into 3. We can't divide 4 into 3. Um, so we know that if 3 goes into all three of these numbers, 12, 9, and 3, which it does, then that's our number greatest common factor. So we can do 3. Great. So we're pulling out a 3 already. Awesome. Now let's look at our variables. We have and let's use a different color. We have x cubed, we have x squared, and then we have x. Awesome. Now, what we have to say is, what's the biggest variable that goes into all of these? A lot of my students say x cubed is the biggest. It is the biggest, but the biggest one that goes all into all of them is kind of like the opposite. I like to tell the students it's the opposite because it's really the greatest common factor for variables, think of the opposite when we're dealing with variables. Why? Because it's actually the smallest variable would be the greatest common factor. Why? Because it's the greatest number that goes into all three of them, not the greatest number. Okay? That might be confusing, but watch. x goes into x, right? x to the first power goes into x. X, goes, x to the first power also goes into x squared, and x to the first power also goes into x cubed. So x would actually be our greatest common factor. Let me explain that again. Since it's the smallest, we know that x can go into x, x can go into x squared, and x can go into x cubed, right? Good job. But can x squared go into x? No, it can't. That's why when we're dealing with the greatest common factor for variables, think of it like the smallest because it's the greatest number. And here, the greatest number would be x to the first power because it goes into all three of those numbers. Awesome. I'm glad you guys understand that. So we have x. Now, we pulled it out. What's left over? Well, the best way I like to explain it to my students, and trust me, over time, this is what works the best for them. Ask yourself what you have to multiply this by, or what you have to multiply to get 12x cubed. Well, what do I have to multiply 3 to get 12? We have to multiply 3 by 4. Awesome. And then, what do we have to multiply x by to get x cubed? Well, if we know our rules for multiplying exponents, it would be x squared, right? Because 3x times 4x squared would give me 12x cubed. Perfect. Because factoring is just distributive property backwards. Awesome. Now, I put my minus sign. What do I have to multiply? And I bring the minus sign here because it was right here. But what do I have to multiply 3x by to get 3x squared? Well, I already have my 3, and I already have 1x, so all I need is just one more x. Awesome. 
Then I bring my addition sign back right here. Now, 9x. Let's see. What do I have to multiply 3x by to get 9x? Well, I would have to multiply that by 3, because I know 3 times 3 gives me 9. I already have an x, so I don't have to multiply it by anything. So that would be what's left over. And, whoa, wait a minute. You guys, we actually just factored here. We factored everything completely because we followed those steps. I'm going to go ahead and erase this now. And let's do another one, just so we understand what we're talking about here. Okay? So I'll go ahead and erase this, and let's go ahead and, and do another one, just so we understand factoring. Remember, factoring, we have to go ahead and take out the greatest common factor. So let's try another one. All right, let's go on a smaller scale here. Let's do um, 4y, no, let's do 4y to the fourth power minus, uh, let's see here, 16y cubed minus 2y squared. Awesome. All right, so first things first, let's start with our numbers. So what is the number that goes into all three of these? What's the biggest number that goes into all three of these numbers? Well, 2 would be the biggest number. And it's not talking about what number is the greatest number, guys. It's just the biggest number that goes into all three of these it would actually be 2. So we take out 2. What about our variables? Remember, we have to think opposite, right? We don't have to look at the greatest number, but we have to look at the actually the smallest one. So the smallest one would be y squared. Great. Now let's put our parentheses. 2y squared. So what do I have to multiply 2y squared to get 4y? Well, let's look at our numbers first. 2 times what gives me 4? 2. Awesome. I have already a y squared, so y squared times what gives me y to the 4th? You got it. y squared. So 2y squared times 2y squared gives me 4y to the 4th. Great. I bring my minus sign down. Let's see. 2 times what number gives me 16? 8. Awesome. Now I already have 2y's because y squared is just y times y, if you guys don't know that. So y squared times what gives me y cubed? You guys got it. That's a y. So 2y squared times 8y would give me 16y cubed. And then, let's see. Hmm. I have a 2 already, so I don't have to use that. I have a y squared already. So when these are the same right here, so if we took out the same, then all we have to do is put a 1, because 1 times 2y squared would give me 2y squared. And congratulations, guys. You've passed the first step for factoring when we're using the greatest common factor.